word, and uh, I just want to uh, deliver it to you. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to the book of Philemon. All right, Philemon, you're like, where is that? Go to the uh, New Testament right after Titus, before the book of Hebrews. So if you go to Hebrews, throw it into reverse and go back until you hit Philemon. All right, and you can stay right there. Philemon, be careful to go to the right chapter, chapter 1. All right, <laughs> chapter 1. All right, there's only one. I am a funny guy. <laughs> funny looking. You're funny looking, all right, thank you. All right, let's, yeah, okay. <laughs> I was kidding. Love you all very, very much. Philemon, uh, one, and let's start in verse, you know what? I think I gave you verse four through seven, but let's go ahead and let's read verse number one. All right, let's read verse number one and we'll read down to verse seven. Paul, what was he? A prisoner. Well, I can't praise God today. Well, Paul was able to give God praise even in prison. Hello, we don't got as bad as we think we do. <laughs> Say, come on. Yeah. <laughs> a prisoner of who? Jesus Christ. Christ Jesus. And then he said, And Timothy, our brother, to Philemon, our beloved friend and fellow laborer. And to the beloved Aphia and Archippus, our fellow soldier, and to the church in your where? In your house. Do you have a church in your house? Yeah. Hello? Do you have a church in your house? Or is this the only church you ever attend? If this is the only church you ever attend, you don't go to church enough. Well, I'm there every time the doors are open. That ain't enough. You need to have a church inside of your house. Amen. We do a little family Bible study. Sometimes we'll do praise and worship together. It may not be as smooth as this. Sometimes it gets crazy and you have to whoop them in between the songs. I'm not going to do that to anybody here today. Praise God. But uh, we need to have church in our house. Paul said, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. No such thing as a oneness theology. This is a Trinitarian theology from the book of Genesis all the way to the book of Revelation. Amen. From God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse number four. Now these are on the TV. I thank my God making mention of you always in my prayers. Paul didn't say, man, I'm spending hours upon hours seeking God. And I said, no, no, no. I'm making mention of you in my prayers. Hearing of your love and faith which you have towards the Lord Jesus and towards all the saints that are sharing of your faith, that the sharing of your faith may become effective by the acknowledgement of every good thing which is in you in Christ Jesus. Verse 7, for we have a great joy and consolation in your love because the hearts of the saints have been refreshed by you, brother. Let me ask you a question. Are you refreshing people or are you affecting people in a negative way? Hello, somebody. I want to be someone whenever people get around me, they get refreshed. Man, they, they come to me sad. They leave happy and laughing. They come to me down. I want them to leave saying, man, it's going to be all right. Amen. I want to be able to refresh people. How about you? Amen. So I just want to preach for a moment or two upon the thought of I'm praying for you. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, I really am praying for you. I really am praying for you. Father, in the name of your son, Jesus, break every yoke, every bondage, every stronghold be broken in the name of Jesus. Have your way in this word today. This is your word and you've given it to your servant to deliver for such a time as this. We ask that you'd help us today in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. 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 The success of a church, pay attention to this, is not measured by its numerical growth, but by its spiritual growth. As a pastor, I have been very, very pleased as of late 
to see the spiritual growth that has taken place in many of your lives. Some of us today here are new believers. You hadn't always been in church. You hadn't always walked hand in hand with Jesus Christ. But you're walking with God now and you're here every time the doors are open. I remind you what Sister Suzette told me a couple months ago. She walked into church, and I just love you. I do. She walks into church, and she's got this big old smile on her face, and she says, Brother William, I've been serving the Lord about a year now. And she goes, man, since I've been serving God, my life has gotten so much better. She said, I used to live in a little uh, a little trailer off of McCord over here, but she said, my daughter bought me a mobile home off of Rosedale Highway. Praise the Lord. And uh, so God's been been very, very good to her, and I uh, thank God uh, for all that the Lord is doing in Suzette's life, and uh, many of you haven't been serving the Lord for a very, very long time, but man, I just see a lot of growth and, and, and uh, even more potential in you than has even been brought out. Uh, I'm very proud that some of us have begun tithing, amen, and I'm very proud of you for that. Uh, some of us haven't always tithed, we haven't always given to God. God, what belongs to him. Some of us haven't always supported the church, but you have taken a difficult step for some of us in tithing now by faith, and it is a sign of your spiritual maturity and your growth in God. Some of us have started teaching classes and, and doing stuff like that. You haven't always taught a class. You haven't always been actively involved in ministry, but you are now and it is once again a sign of your spiritual growth. In our text, the Apostle Paul was writing a man by the name of Philemon, say Philemon, Philemon. who was holding church services inside of his house. And Paul wrote Philemon and he said, knowing that your family is walking with God and having church services in your house, it causes me to pray for you guys continually. So often, though, you and I only pray for those who are sick, stressed out, and going through difficult trials. However, God doesn't only want us to pray for people when they're hurting. God wants us to pray for people when they're doing very, very well. Why is that? Because whenever, hear me now, whenever the enemy sees a child, God growing in the Lord, it is then at that moment he launches an all-out attack against them. He'll attack their ministry. He'll attack their finances. He'll attack their peace of mind. He'll attack their children. He'll attack their home. He'll attack their thoughts, their feelings, and their emotions as the devil makes one last attempt to stop you in your tracks and to keep you from progressing any further than you already are right now. But like Jesus today, I am praying for you that your faith fail not. Some of us today are on the brink of a great breakthrough. Some of us are on the brink of a blessing so much that you can't see it. You can't even imagine what God's going to do. Some of us today are on the verge of the greatest revival that we have ever experienced in all of our lives. That's why hell is fighting you like it's fighting you. But don't stop now. Don't throw in the towel. Don't give up now. I am praying for you that your faith fail not. Somebody ought to give the Lord a good prayer. Number one today, 
I want you to know that I am praying that your faith fail not. Amen. I am, I mean that I am praying that your faith fail not. Satan doesn't fight against those who never cause him any trouble. He only fights those that are a true threat to his kingdom. We see a prime example of this in the life of Peter in Luke 22, 31. Jesus said unto Peter, Indeed, Satan has asked that he may sift you as wheat. Jesus was giving one of his closest friends and disciples a good stern warning. Jesus was saying, Peter, the devil has seen your growth, brother. The devil has seen you walking on the water. Peter, the devil heard you whenever you looked at me and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. But Peter, because of your spiritual growth, Satan has asked that he may sit you as weak. Jesus was saying, Peter, be careful. Get ready. The devil's going to attack your faith. He's going to attack your ministry. He's going to attack your call. But Peter, I am praying for you that your faith will not. Do you find yourself being under attack this morning? If so, it may just be the devil trying to stop you in your spiritual growth. Sees you tithing, the devil sees you getting involved, the devil sees you loving Jesus and being faithful to Jesus as you never have before. So he's doing everything that he can to stop you right here and right now. But I am praying as Jesus did, Lord, do not let their faith fail in this time. God, let them keep giving, let them keep marching forth, let them keep singing, let them keep teaching. I don't want to work. Yeah. <laughs> I 
I wish I could have that kind of disposition. <laughs> have my customers home. Why didn't you mow my lawn? I just didn't want to. It's a little chilly in the morning. I didn't, I didn't want to get it out there. <laughs> you don't pick up after your dog. That's why I don't want to go mow your yard. Praise the Lord. Oh, but you see, church, oh, there's some people, man. Man, it's just like they're going through this and they're going through that. They got this thing going on and they got that thing going on. And they don't even realize it is a test. Amen. You've got to remain faithful whether you feel like it or you don't. Yes. Amen. Amen. It's always darkest just before the dawning. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Number two, I'm praying that you overcome discouragement. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. I'm praying that your faith doesn't fail. I want you to keep holding on to God. Don't quit like a lot of people are doing. And I'm praying that you overcome the spirit of discouragement. In the late 1800s, there was a man by the name of Thomas Edison. He bought a patent and started working on an invention called the light bulb. Yeah. Mr. Edison, I thought it was a thousand attempts. It was actually more. He made over 2,774 light bulbs without any success whatsoever. But finally... After failing 2,774 times, he finally got a light bulb that worked. Praise God. I'm sure it was discouraging all them light bulbs that blew up in his face. All them light bulbs that he labored and worked on for hours upon hours that just didn't work for some reason or another. But he kept overcoming his discouragement. And we have light bulbs all around this church because that man overcame his discouragement. The devil would not try to discourage you to quit if God was not about to do something great. I'm going to say that again. The devil would not try to discourage you like he has been this past week if God wasn't about to do something miraculous in and through your life. Amen. Brandon and I, we started pastoring in 2015 and we started doing that on a Super Bowl Sunday. Now, if anybody came to me and said, we want to plant a church too, one, one thing of advice I would give them is, number one, be yourself. That's the number one thing. Don't try to be like everybody else told you. You be who God called you to be. That's one thing that I like. It took the first four years as a pastor, I was a dummy. I mean, a star. Rick, I'm going to make it where you can't talk. <laughs> I'll just tell you, you start walking around, you'll fall. <laughs> man, first four years of my life, man, I, I'm just being like Dad always told me I needed to be. Man, I wore a suit and tie every time. Nothing wrong with that. But even as a kid, I never dressed like that. That wasn't me. Oh, I was raised where you only sing old songs. We started out doing like a mixture, and then it was like only old songs. And then one day I was watching Andy Griffith, and they were singing the same songs we sang in church. I thought, I think it's time for an upgrade. <laughs> you remember that? I was watching Andy Griffith, and I was, <laughs> we're doing that same. <laughs> and we love to sing them old songs. It's all right. It's all right to sing an old song. It's all right to sing a new song. I just want to give God praise and, and give give us an opportunity to be able to praise God like we do. But. Uh, First of all, I tell them, be like yourself. And number two, don't start a church on Super Bowl Sunday. <laughs> Super Bowl Sunday morning was cool. There was like 25 people there. Well, I mean, they were planting this thing from the ground. Now, there ain't nobody except for us. But there's 25 people there. Mostly it was like friends and family that felt sorry for us. But they come. <laughs> sat in church. But Sunday night come. Super Bowl's on. Yeah. I was wishing there was nobody. It was so awkward, but we had one lady show up. No wonder she said, I felt like you were preaching right at me. I was. I had, I had no other choice. I knew you wanted my money. That's why you took that offering. Praise God. Hey, I put a dollar in there too. Praise God. Oh, but you see, man, I remember seeing that one lady there. And no, no, but we didn't have a church yet. I mean, we had a building, but we didn't have a church. You know what I mean? Man, I'm up there and I'm preaching. It had been very easy for me to get discouraged and say, honey, let's just do what a lot of churches do when it's a low crowd. Let's just have a prayer meeting. 
I don't want to waste one of my messages. I, that's what a lot. That's just a little insider secret. Amen. Oh, but I'm here to tell you, we just had to stay persistent. We had to just keep believing God. It was about a week later. One day, Tori called me, and I was working over Michelin. And she said, "Brother William, we're going to start going to your church." And I thought, "You ain't ever been to one of my services before. We don't have like two or three at the time, but you're going to make New Hope your home church. Come on, we need people." Wayne and Diane and Tori and the girls come and, and Jeremiah and Haley and all the kids. And so they come in. Next thing you know, uh, it's Melrose that is coming. And, and then Lena's coming. And then Randy and Mary and Seth are coming. Then next thing you know, we got this little church now over on Baker Street. But you see, we wouldn't be here today if we would have quit back then. You can't let what you see right now discourage you and stop you from what God has planned in the future. I didn't know we'd ever be over here in this building on Roberts Lane. I didn't know I'd ever have to put chairs out to hold all the people. I didn't know I'd ever have pastor a church where I got to park down the road to make sure we got places for people to park. But let me tell you something. This easily could have never been if we would have stopped back then. You've got to keep on going, church. Don't let discouragement stop you in your tracks. Lift up your hands in this sanctuary and say, Lord Jesus, empower me to keep going and to keep pressing. Discouragements are going to come in life. Yes. Amen. Well, I don't really believe that. Well, then you're not living. <laughs> Discouragements are going to come. Not everybody's going to get behind you. Hello, not everybody's going to have your vision. You know why? Because it's not their vision. It's the vision God gave you. And you've got to learn to be comfortable with that. Don't quit. Don't give up. Don't throw in the towel. I'm praying that you overcome discouragement. I am so, so proud. And I hope he doesn't get embarrassed. But if he does, I don't care. I love him. I've been his pastor since he was about 10 years old. I'm so proud of Seth. <laughs> give Seth a hand. I'm so proud of that guy back there. He's been working with the youth for the last couple of months doing a fantastic job. So proud of you, dude. But I want to give him a warning. The enemy is going to try to discourage you. Yeah. Amen. That's good news. <laughs> the enemy is going to try to discourage you. Amen. He's going to tell you, Seth, you're not old enough to teach. You're not that much older than the kids in your class. Let me tell you something. I remember whenever I taught an adult Sunday school class out at the Seventh Standard Pentecostal Church of God. And I remember the average age in that class was 70 years old. <laughs> Here I am, I think I'm 25, 26 years old at the time, and I'm teaching all seniors. <laughs> and I felt to myself, I'm not worthy. I'm not as experienced as this person. I'm not as worthy as that person. God, you know I still got my problems and my, my hang-ups in my own life. But, but you know what? I just kept going. Amen. And that's what you've got to do, Seth. Keep going. Man, there's going to be times that the class is going to be full. There's going to be times you're going to have maybe one, two kids in there. But you've got to keep going. Don't let discouragement stop you in your tracks. Amen. Hell would not fight us if we were not doing something. Something for Jesus. I am praying for you that you overcome discouragement. I am praying that you overcome frustration. Can you say amen? amen. Last Sunday, several of us went over to the house next door and we laid our hands on it and we began to, to pray over it. We didn't see a difference on Sunday night. Hello? Yeah. We didn't see a difference. But look what God's doing now. Some of us, we just give up way too easy. Don't give up. Be not weary and well do it. For in due season you shall reap if you faint not. I remember Sister Mary, whenever she was, she had just started doing the ladies' ministry. And they had their first meeting. I don't remember where it was or her house. Diane's got the greatest memory there's ever. <laughs> and man, all I heard was, wow, what a great time we had. I told Mary, sis, that, all I hear is great things. 
I don't know if you remember, but I told you, I said, but Mary, be prepared. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. Be prepared because it ain't always going to be like that. Right. Yeah. There's going to be times when you may have a meeting full of ladies, there may be times where you're thinking, I guess nobody else wants to be a part of it. <laughs> Hello, somebody. Same can be said of the seniors, brother. Yes. Same can be said of a pastor. I guess nobody wants to have church. Hello, somebody. But you can't let discouragement stop you. If God's called you to do something, You've got to do it with all your heart, yeah. with all your soul, and with all your might. Can you say amen yeah. this morning? You've got to keep going. Oh, well, nobody else is getting behind it. Nobody else seems to care. Who cares? What did God tell you to do? Yeah. Do that. Stay faithful to him. Can you say amen? amen? Number three, this is the last thing today. I'm praying for a greater anointing. Yeah. Hello, somebody. I am praying for a greater anointing upon you and upon myself today. Praise God. On Wednesday, we learned about a guy in the Bible by the name of Shema. I say Shema. He had been working in a pea patch with a lot of other Israelites. But whenever the Philistines came towards that field, Shammah's buddies, the Israelites, took off running for their lives like a bunch of cowards. Shammah had a choice. He could get discouraged and take off like everybody else. Or he could stand where he was and fight as he never fought before. Shammah stood his ground. The Holy Spirit came upon him, anointed him, and gave Shema the victory. Shema should have been wiped out. Shema should have been devoured and killed. But he wasn't. Because a greater anointing came and gave him the power that he needed. You know what you need in these last days? You need a greater anointing that comes from the Holy Spirit. You need the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Jesus said, and these signs shall follow them that believe. Hallelujah. They'll lay their hands on the sick. They'll recover. They'll cast out devils. They'll speak with other tongues. They'll take up serpents and scorpions and any other deadly thing. It shall not harm them. Now, I'm not saying we're going to pick up some snakes. <laughs> try to come up here with a snake, I'm going to shoot that thing. <laughs> and believe in that snake handle. In it. Yeah. One time, Brother Rick's mom, where was that church your mom went to? Florida. It was in Florida. Florida. <laughs> <laughs> she back there, she goes in to preach this revival and all of a sudden they bring the snakes out. <laughs> Rick's mom said, yeah, God told me we're not going to have revival. And she, she jammed out of that church. I don't blame her. Praise the Lord. I tell you, you don't need to bring in a literal snake. There's plenty of snakes all around us. Some of us got snakes in our pockets. It's called cell phone. And you ain't got victory over it. That's why you're addicted to pornography. Some have got some have got snakes in our in our wallet. You know what it is? It's called a credit card. There you go. And you know what the credit card does? Is it keeps you in debt. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. And then you're a servant to the lender and you're just praying all the time, God, I don't know why I'm in the mess that I'm in. Uh, <laughs> it's because you got a snake in your wallet. Sneaky snake. Oh, but I tell Oh, yeah? Yeah. Oh, but I tell you, some of us got snakes on our friends list on Facebook. I know somebody. Some of us got snakes on the jaw and this. But you know what? Those things don't have to devour you. There's victory. There's authority. Jesus said, all, all authority, all power has been given unto me in heaven. And on the earth, all we've got to do is exercise that power. How I many you want a greater anointing? How I many you need a greater anointing? Well, I do. I thank God for what he's done up until this point in my ministry. 
But I need more to keep going. You need more to keep going. Let's all stand to our, our feet today. I want you to lift up your hands to the Lord Jesus. Why don't our musicians come today? Let's just lift up our hands. I know it wasn't too long of a message. Nobody's ever complained about a short message. <laughs> Lord, have your way. Have your way. God, I'm praying. I'm praying, Lord, for these people. I'm praying, Lord, that they overcome the adversary. I'm praying, Lord, that they overcome addiction. I'm praying, Jesus, that they overcome the schemes and the plans of the devil in the name of Jesus. Oh, let's lift up our hands in the sanctuary today. Lord, we love you. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We love you. Lord. Can you see this morning? Your name is power.
the place where you just surrender it all. Yeah. You'll overcome that discouragement. Yeah. Because you say, it's not about me. It's about Christ living inside of me. Oh, let's lift up our hands one more time in the sanctuary. Oh, we love you. Thank you, Jesus. Remember tonight, if you're going to be doing the trunk or treat, be here at uh, 5. And uh, come with a good attitude. We're here to demonstrate the love of Jesus. Amen? Because the attitudes that we put off tonight, that's what they're going to think of this church. So I want to display the light of Jesus. Amen? I surrender all. is in all that we want to fit in. So let's bring plenty of candy or have a good time. All right. All right. Uh, and we've got plenty of candy in the back as well. We appreciate everyone for bringing your candy. Thank you, guys. And give yourselves a hand. Here. Thank you. And, uh, appreciate you guys bringing candy and be praying over this outreach tonight. Uh, I'm going to ask if Sister Miranda could dismiss us in a word of prayer.